Since ChatGPT came out, many people have been waiting for AI tools that interact with your personal data. In this video, I'll show you how Google Bart now allows you to do this with your emails. First, I show you how you can do this. Then I'll give you simple step-by-step -step guidance how you can set it up for yourself. So here we are on the Google Bard website. Just in case you're not familiar with Bard, this is basically Google's answer to ChatGPT. In the first example I want to share with you, I'm going to ask questions about a university event I signed up for. So let's type at Gmail. This will allow us to specifically get answers from Gmail. And then I'll type, when is the Thames annual event this year? And what activities did I sign up for? Now, you'll see that it takes a moment, then checks Gmail correctly, and it gives me the answer that is from December 6th to 10th and it lists all the events that I signed up for exactly like I asked. It even tells me that I received a 5% discount uh, for early sign up. So then let's just say I'm not sure if I already booked transportation and accommodation for this trip. And of course you can always check your booking apps to find out about that. But if you also sign up with your email address, you usually receive a confirmation. That means your email account is another place where this information is stored, which means we can use BART to find out about this. So now let's ask again Gmail. Did I already book my transport and hotel for this trip? Note that I don't need to mention the detail again because this is context sensitive, so it will remember my previous question. So I sent this. Again, Google goes in my workspaces, checks my email, and it tells me that it couldn't find information to help me with that which is actually correct because I didn't book anything yet. So there is really no information to find and it could express that a bit more elegantly, I guess, but uh, I didn't make any booking. So that also tells me what I wanted to know. So these were some use cases where I was looking up information, but another application is to summarize emails that I already know that I have. For example, I recently signed up for a seven days, seven newsletter crash course, how to start a YouTube channel by Ali Abdal. But because I was traveling in Japan, I really had no time to read through them. Now I just have these seven emails in my inbox. So I can just use BART to get some key takeaways from all these emails. So let's ask Gmail, what tips did I receive from Ali Abdal about building a successful YouTube channel and after a second I will get all these key takeaways from his emails which are all fairly good points and good takeaways and it even lists me exactly where I got this information from. To be fair the sources are right now limited to five emails and you see actually it only took two out of the seven day crash course emails. So definitely there are more things in the email that were not considered here. But even that the key takeaways were obviously quite accurate and relevant. So now if I want to see more I can still look in the, in the individual emails of course but this is already a great starting point. Now, let's say I want to write an email. I can also use BART to help me with that. For example, uh, let's say I'm really happy with Ali Abdal's emails and I want to draft an answer. So here I can just go with Gmail and ask it to draft an answer to the most recent email from Ali Abdal that expresses my admiration for his work. And again, it takes a moment, 
to find the most recent email. Actually, it doesn't, even though I specifically ask it to look at Gmail. So this worked better when I tested it early on. Now this is going to be useless because it didn't actually look into my emails. So I'm going to try this again. And I'll adjust the query. All right, in the sources, we see it found quite a lot of emails and it found the most recent email, but it didn't actually do what I asked it again. So you see, it's kind of unreliable. When I tested this in the past, it actually gave me the correct answer. So let's try one last time and see if it works. It really doesn't work this time. When I tried this in the past, it actually worked and drafted me the email that I wanted, but Google just launched this service um, like two weeks ago. So I guess there are really some improvements that need to be made. So to sum up, the main use cases right now are accessing and summarizing information in your inbox. Bart can sometimes also compose emails based on this input, but as you saw in my live demo just now, it's quite unreliable. It also can't yet open Gmail or even send out emails on its own. So that means even if you get an answer, you will need to copy paste it and then send it out yourself. Next, let me show you how you can set this up for yourself. I'll be assuming you already know and use Gmail because without Gmail, this whole service doesn't really work. If you have Gmail, that also means you already have a Google account. All right, so first head to bar.google.com where you'll see this website and you'll need to sign in. If you sign in, make sure you use the same Google account that also is used for your emails. And you might have listed several ones here, so just choose the correct one. You'll be asked to sign in with your password. And once you did that, you will receive this window here, which we also used for our demo earlier. Now, before you can actually interact with Gmail, you need to go here on extensions in the top right of the BART window and click it. Here you see there are several extensions currently available. The relevant one that we are looking for is called Google Workspace and you see it includes Gmail. And this is not activated by default, so you need to uh, turn on this switch which then gives you this warning that BARD will have access to your data, basically your emails. But consider that BARD is also Google. So basically you are giving Google access to something that Google already has access to. It's just another team. It's also good to know that they will not use your emails to train BARD, but it will still be visible to individual employees. So here we activate this before we go back to BART and then we can just start chatting here. And a way to make sure you're interacting with your Gmail is to start your chat with at and then Gmail. Also, as we saw in the demo just before, this is not really reliable because BART sometimes just does whatever it wants, but at least it increases the chance you will receive the answer you want. And now you're ready. And that is how you can use BART to interact with your emails. Everything that I showed you in today's video is completely free and neither Gmail nor BART have a premium version, so I expect it to also remain free. If you have any questions or anything isn't working, please let me know in the comments. And with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.